Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm John from Red Team Village, and I have some amazing guests with me from Kindo AI. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for your support and uh, being a platinum sponsor. Uh, we'll just get this uh, interview rolling here, and if uh, you could introduce yourself and describe what you do. Yeah, sure. So I'm Ron Williams, CEO and uh, founder of Kindo, um, based in uh, the Los Angeles area, um, along with, with most of the company. Uh, my background, I started my career in the Air Force as a combat systems planning uh, programmer. Um, did that for about six years. Um, and then uh, this is this is back in the 90s, and it was a big Sun Microsystems Oracle shop uh, kind of project, and ended up just you know uh, shifting over into building technology on, on those company stacks after I left the Air Force. And those happened to be the companies that built a lot of the early internet in the 90s and 2000s, and made my way into more successively larger uh, enterprise IT and security roles as the 2000s rolled on, and eventually landing at Riot Games in 2011 to run all the infrastructure, IT, and security there. Um, from about 2011 into 2016, uh, when we were bought by Tencent, the, the big Chinese game publisher, and uh, wanted to get back to startups. And so I jumped over to Clover Health, which was a big Medicare Advantage uh, plan kind of startup trying to fix Medicare, backed by Google Ventures. Um, grew that company to about 800 people, 800 people or so and a couple billion dollars in valuation. Um, and then uh, as their chief security and compliance officer, and also ended up running IT there, and then jumped into Bird Scooters to be their chief security officer, and uh, also ended up running IT at Bird as well, and uh, through its crazy days. Um, and then um, ended up at a company called Subspace, which was a startup trying to fix internet latency and some unique security problems for real-time communications, like this, like a video call we're on now, or uh, for video games. I built a similar network like that for Riot Games, and they wanted to commercialize it, basically. And then recently founded Kendo back in October of 2022 to help solve enterprise AI management and security headaches as a whole bunch of AI start landing inside these companies. Um, so that's my background. My name is Ken Kado. I'm an advisor to Kindo, among other companies. Uh, I began my career really by accident how I got here. So I began in the world of good old-fashioned IT. And before DevOps even existed, how do we automate this to changes? At the time, I'm working in startups and doing my own startups in highly regulated industries, fintech, health, stuff like that. And I remember grabbing the very first version of Puppet off of GitHub and teaching my team how to use it and then scaling that up and start to deal with how to do security compliance and automation. It, this is far before the time the platforms really existed. So I am now coming up with bespoke platforms for the energy industry, finance industry, health industry. And as that scaled up and companies got sold off, I exited a couple of companies and find myself in the next round of what do I do with my life? And at the time, I had enough leeway to go do research. So I wound up working at MIT Lincoln Labs and doing malware research. And it was really interesting to be able to learn how to take apart malware, understand what the malware signatures are, stuff like that. And that led to other interesting stuff like coming up with cyber ranges. So when you hear the phrase cyber range, a lot of people go, what is that? Uh, simply put, it is a cyber representation of a given area of interest. Let's say in the context of the military, how would you defend a Patriot missile battery in the cyber world? So that's the kind of stuff I started to replicate. And that led to just really, really interesting work in the Department of Defense and the Intel community. And I found my way to then being the founding floor of a program called uh, US Air Force's Castle Run. So I'm the founding cloud architect for Castle Run, where we were able to build the very first software factory in the US government. And it became the go-to reference point for what a software factory should be, not just in the Department of Defense, but across the US government. Uh, I was then left that to join the White House Presidential Innovation Fellowship, where I served for four years, first two years with the Department of Navy, and the latter two years across the entire government, where I got to do some really, really interesting stuff. Um, in the Department of Navy, I got to build Black Pearl for them, which was an absolute pleasure to do. And after leaving that, just contributed stuff that matters to you and I. So I got a chance to work with Login Doug Gout, how to improve some of the login uh, latency and security. I got to even help launch COVID test Gov. And today, I'm an advisor to several different companies, including Kindo. And also, I happen to be working in a company called Omni Federal out of Virginia. And we do a lot of defensive service stuff. So there, I'm the, uh, I am their vice president of AI. And right now, I'm working with Kindo to develop a couple of products between us and Kindo. Very cool. Uh, again, uh, happy to have you on this interview. And um, the, the next thing, I guess, is uh, how do you see red teaming impacting Kindo AI or the, the bigger AI sector? So I recently had some initial use cases where I uh, bought a couple of uh, stacks from uh, Kindo's team. 
to roll out and demo out to some components of the Department of Defense. And leveraging White Rabbit Neo, we were able to look at some sort, like initial source code evaluation and just simple comparison. Is it worth the sniff of looking at static analysis tools versus live analysis? Is red teaming worth it? Well, it's 100%. And what's nice about leveraging an AI tool is on demand. I don't have to wait for a human team to be in a loop. I could have, I could really just train the same uh, either security team and or software development engineers and to just teach them better prompting techniques to leverage a tool in line to what they're already doing, especially with stuff like a VS Code plugin. It, it gets pretty slick on the usability. Yeah, yeah I, I think for my part, you know, the big, the big shift we're seeing as, as we talk to customers and just thinking as, you know, an ex, uh, you know, security leader myself is AI is definitely changing the game. The, you know, both at, from a resource for knowledge um, and, and easy access to knowledge, both helping the good guys and, and the bad guys, uh, as well as uh, a, a new source of uh, capabilities to automate uh, defenses uh, and attacks as well. Um, we're really starting to see the pace of everything speed up a lot uh, because of what's happening in AI. And, you know, today we're using the worst AI models we're ever going to use. These things are getting better and better, faster and faster. And uh, and so it's it's really becoming important to start paying attention to, to how that space is developing. And then, you know, more broadly, uh, more and more companies are, are really starting, I think, spend more on either bringing in outside red team uh, organizations to help them or building that capability in-house. So everybody understands the importance of, you know, sometimes the best defense is uh, the best offense, right? And, um, and, and so we're seeing, uh, you know, we're seeing more of that in companies as well. What do you see the the long term vision of uh, White Rabbit Neo is? Uh, where do you see it leading and uh, potentially shifting the industry? Yeah, yeah. You know, when we we didn't create White Rabbit Neo, it was created by a gentleman by the name of Miguel Tessera, um, who's kind of a popular uh, AI model builder on Hugging Face. He's got some other models um, that he's been working on, trying to create lightweight uh, GPT four class, like so state of the art, small open source models. Um, and under the test TESS series of models. And last winter, I think around November, December, he was trying to just, you know, also improve some cybersecurity for a startup that he he's the CTO of called Metaspectral. And uh, he was working on, you know, just trying to get AI to help him with that and using the commercial AIs like from OpenAI or from Anthropic or Microsoft or whoever, those AIs have such strong safety programming in them that it's very hard to get them to be a red team AI. They'll, you know, they'll complain that what you're trying to do isn't safe, or I can't help you hack something, or it might be illegal. You know, and, and even when you're just trying to do legitimate internal red teaming things, you have to struggle with these models. And he decided to just solve the problem himself and created this open source model uh, called that he called White Rabbit Neo. And I think in reference to maybe the the the, Ma the Matrix series of uh, movies that he really liked. And the um, the models that he created were, were very focused on the, the red team perspective. And so he he took the very best of the open source models at the time because he wanted to keep doing open source, which uh, for the coding models, which you know a lot of red teaming involves some kind of coding or scripting. He wanted one that was very, very good at coding. So he, he built a model on top of uh, DeepSeek, which is a Chinese hedge fund that has been doing some very, really good community shipped models targeting, um, you know, uh, trying to build state-of-the-art large language models. And they built this really powerful coding model called DeepSeek version one coding. And it, and Miguel had tried several models and, and he finally decided that that was going to be the best one to work on. That one at the time was state-of-the-art. Uh, only the very best, most expensive commercial models uh, surpassed it in its coding capability. I think it was basically the fifth best coding model in the entire world at the time. And then he applied the White Rabbit Neo data set that he has hand-created um, and then supplemented with additional AI uh, examples, and then fine-tuned the DeepSeek model into a thing you call White Rabbit Neo, and then started running evaluation benchmarks, all the standard evaluation benchmarks, and found out he was actually creating a better coding model than even the underlying uh, top model was already doing. And so that got into the public's hands um, and uh, got quite a bit of both notoriety and you know like oh there's an AI offensive cybersecurity model open source as well as a, a community of legitimate people started uh, uh, playing around with it and starting to use it going in the beginning of this year and I reached out to him in March or so wanting to get that model into Kendo and wanted to work with him on how best to do that and he was reaching the point where he'd taken the community as far as he could and the model effort and and was wondering if we'd like to take over the sponsorship of the open source project and. Um, and I was like, yeah, we'd be happy to do that. And so Miguel turned the project over to us and uh, 
uh, remains as a, as a kind of advisor with us to help us out on, on a few things um, as time permits. But um, uh, we now kind of have sponsorship of this model and still uh, make it available free to the community. Uh, we're still investing in newer models, even making it better, more data, uh, building a much richer community around it. All that's in flight, um, which is one of the reasons why we're, we're at DEF CON with it. And we hope uh, to get it to the point where the community just fully runs and owns it. It's not a model we want to own. It's just a model that we think has a place in the world that the world needs, a very powerful code model that's not censored so you can actually use it to, to solve tough problems. And um, so, you know, that, that place uh, is currently not solved by, by other things. Um, and if we can get the community around that and we can apply our resources to help speed up things and, and support, um, that, that was the opportunity we saw. And uh, so we brought it in. And so we think like inside of Kindo, which lets you use a common chat bot across all your models and the IT and security controls to let an enterprise easily deploy all the models they want to deploy and a no code agent builder, all those things are better in Kindo. Having access also now to White Rabbit Neo uh, now lets security teams come in and build some pretty powerful solutions inside their companies and essentially manage and, and control things. Uh, that's where we saw fitting in for us. But we think the whole world especially the security world, should be able to leverage uh, the power of these tools uh, in, in a legitimate open source way. And we're hoping we can get more community around it and more contributors uh, as well. Yeah, I, I think you guys mentioned uh, a lot about, uh, you know, what makes it the strongest or best in its uh, class. Um, is, is there any more uh, info you want to talk about and, uh, you know, why yeah. you're supporting it so much? Yeah, and then Ken probably has some great use cases to uh, talk about as well. But so, so to be clear, like the way to think of White Rabbit Neo is it's really a data set that can be used to fine tune any model. And we released the data sets as well open source. There's currently a, a much better data set that has not been released yet. We're in the process of getting ready to release it. Um, and then we pick the best open source model that we think uh, for whatever the use case is. So in the case of DeepSeek, it was just the best coding model, but DeepSeek is, can be a bigger model and you might want a smaller model that you can run on, on less powerful hardware or locally on your MacBook or whatever, or on your gaming PC. Um, and so uh, it needs to support lots of different size models and from different vendors. And then the underlying models are always getting better too. So now there's DeepSeek version two as well. And so we're looking at, you know, when's the right time to convert to, to that? It's a much bigger, more expensive model to run for everybody. So we've been thinking about when the right time. And today, Meta just released Llama 3.1 models of different sizes. So those will probably be the next models we release uh, very soon. I would say by mid-August, or a couple weeks after DEF CON probably, we'll have, the community will have access to the latest Llama 3.1 version, different model sizes to pick from. Um, we'll probably go up to the 70 billion parameter size because anything bigger than that, it gets really hard to get the hardware together for people to run things. Um, and uh, and those look super competent in their in their ability to um, to solve all kinds of problems, coding or whatever. So so, so all that's in flight. Um, and, and we think our resources to, it costs, you know, to train Llama 3.1 70 billion, we might, end up spending 10 or $20,000 just on GPU time to do that. It's not something a lot of open source communities can, can support on their own. Um, so that's our contribution. And obviously the engineering time uh, to also, it could take a couple of weeks to, to uh, supervise that training and test it, make sure everything went well, run the evaluations. All of that is our contribution then to the community. And hopefully uh, people will find that valuable and share it and, and do more with it. And uh, eventually come in and help us with, with more improved data or uh, maybe some other people want to partner that have resources to access to training GPUs and things like that also. Um, we'll, we'll build all that as, as the time goes on. But, but that's what we see. Right now we're focused on how do we get the best possible model into uh, people's hands so that they can really use this in, in the ways they need to use it. So for the government related use case that I could think of is Executive Order 14028. That EO came out in 2021 in reaction to Sutherland's in that breach. The Executive Order is to improve nation's cybersecurity. I really wish I had my rapid new back then because I was a White House fellow during that time trying to answer questions to the Oval Office and other agencies about how to improve and change this because Sutherland's a big deal. And looking at Sutherland's breach, it was stuff that people didn't think about attacking. It, it, yes, it was a supply chain attack, but looking at the attack method, it was pretty creative. And at the end of the day, the actual vulnerability was pretty dumb. And I hate to say it, but it was. So looking at tools like Bright Rabbit Neo, this is the kind of tool that can really, really change how to think about this stuff. So if you really think about not just the government, but any company or organization, it's costly to have a red team. It's also hard to have a red team. 
if there's a lot of uphill problems to engage a direct team. When you remove those blockers, you have a lot of security improvements. And now you're open to the idea of not just a model like my revenue, but then hiring in the appropriate talent to not just drive this tool, but to improve it. Because keep in mind, it is an open source tool. We are expecting contribution from the open source community. We're expecting people to be able to con not just contribute, but to use this and give us feedback on how it's being used. And there's emerging use cases every day. So with initial use cases like that executive order and beyond, yeah, we're pretty excited to look at what's going to happen next. And to Ron's comment about the different parameter size, yes, thank you, Ken, for pulling the bill on that large scale training. You're right, the open source community can't support it. Like I myself, which I just priced out eight, eight, one, um, H100 GPU and a four year rack just for personal, not personal, company, like internal company development. And I'm looking at a $300,000 bill just to get that four year rack of eight GPUs. So yes, this is a costly proposition, but it is far more costly to not do this. Any uh, advice you give to uh, red teamers or teams out there that are interested in uh, Kindle AI's world or White Rabbit Neo, how they could get involved? Yeah, for sure. So you know, if you go to whiterabbitneo.com, um, that, that's where you can play with the the current most powerful version of White Rabbit Neo. It's just a chatbot you can start chatting with. Um, it has some suggestions to kind of guide you on you know type of questions you can ask, but you know the, the the things you can do with with just the chatbot are you know uh, help you write better config files for devices like Cisco routers or firewalls or check them for security issues or explain explain how this file this configuration file what does it do right depending on what your skill level is right like the 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 model behind White Rabbit Neo has read the entire internet in multiple languages and so it's read everything about security it's read everything all the support documents that that have been publicly available for all the different gear out there all the blogs about how to you know secure cisco or or f5 networks or think about you know your security training and posture like all of that stuff has been consumed by the model along with all the rest of the internet too right like uh but uh and then we've gone in with the data set Magalis created to uh with with much more stronger both coding examples and uh security examples to shape the model even more and uh towards um, you know, red team type security problems. So it's, it's very specifically set on more the offensive side of things. And then just play with it and see. You'll find the model uh, talks uh, code a lot because it's been built as a coding model and a lot of problems are addressed by code and scripting. Uh, it will code in multiple languages. It'll write, you know, bash scripts for you or, or you know, any kind of uh, uh, different scripting languages you might want to write in uh, as well. Um, it's also handy for code analysis. Um, Inside of Kindo, if you're a Kindo user, and, and, and people can, can try Kindo for free also, but we have a, a coding plugin that you can drop into your IDE and then turn White Rabbit Neo in there. So now you can have it just work directly with your code base, write code, find security problems with code, uh, rewrite code uh, if you want to as well. Um, find, you know, find the kill switch in a piece of malware. Like there's so much you can do with this uh, pretty powerful knowledge store. Uh, back at the chatbot though, uh, it's also just a great learning tool. Ask it questions uh, on any kind of security topic. It would go from basic to advanced on on all kinds of things. So so it's great for early career people to to leverage uh, as a resource. And then experts can also get it to sing and do some some pretty powerful things. If when you're first using it, if if it's if it, it'll tend to come back more basic at first, but you just push it and you're like, okay, great. Now now you know like it might be here's an example simple piece of malware to go after your office network. And that'll look pretty simple and probably not be super effective, but then say, okay, now I need something to be uh, actually work. And then it'll rewrite it and start building stronger and stronger uh, pieces of code. And you can try it. If it doesn't work, come back and tell, tell the model what went wrong and it'll fix it and rewrite it. And, and you just try it again. And so it's, um, that's the, those are the kind of different ways uh, people are using it. Um, and then join the Discord off the whiterabbitneo.com website. And there's Kendo staff in there as well. We have a new community manager joining as well, uh, who's been at some of the top security companies and also ran villages at DEF CON uh, also. And so uh, sh she'll be in soon uh, by the time uh, we're actually at DEF CON to, uh, to really help grow and, and nurture the community. Uh, but we're there to ask, you know, ask questions of and, and get feedback from the community on what they want to improve. Uh, we've already gotten a lot. Um, it's probably 1,200 members or so in the current Discord, maybe 1,300. Um, so, you know, there's usually also some of the community in there to, to, to chat with and, and get help. So those are probably the best ways. And then you can always email us at Kendo. Kendo's also got a support, uh, button you can press that has live support. You can ask questions of and, and they'll help also. So 
So, you know, we're happy to, to do what we can to, to meet the community. We'll be walking around DEF CON. You'll see people in Kendo t-shirts with our big robot logo. We won't have this heavy black hoodie on because it's Vegas. But uh, those, uh, if, if you'll come up and we're, you know, super happy to talk and, and provide guidance or whatever, we'll be at some of the uh, events and we'll have some of our de developers there in the capture of the flag events and, and other things as well. So, so you'll see a lot of Kendo people wandering around. One of the uh, enormous use cases that I stumbled across is a white rabbit in the wild. So when you write stuff like Terraform, there is very limited tools available to investigate whether or not the Terraform, Terraform core is secure. Or for that matter, when Terraform paves something, what is actually thing? how? Like unless you know the world of IAC, and how to secure it and how to do bastions and all this other stuff, it's actually a massive pain. It's, there's a lot of learning you have to do in the job. And this is that weird area of comp side that's not really taught anywhere. White Rabbit is one of the few tools who was able to well, who, well, that was able to give security insights to IAC. So I purposely wrote some really, really terrible Terraform courts just to see what it would do. And at first night, it was like, hey, the, you probably don't want to plain text, you know, AWS key, stuff like that. Basic things I expected to catch. Well, I did not expect any dead catch. Uh, certain uh, networking configuration with Kubernetes. Like Terraform is not the best for KAs, but there's a way to pave it. And yeah, it did it badly in purpose and they caught it. It was actually really surprised to watch that happen. And it's for the real life application of Y Rabbit Neo. So I was able to teach airman coders. So imagine this. You're the you're in the Air Force, you go through a very limited amount of schooling to become a some kind of coder somewhere. So you don't have a lot of screen backgrounds whatsoever. Given this tool in line to what they're doing on VS Code with a plugin, I was able to teach the airman how to write a React app in a day, not but just not just write it, but then also start teaching best practices. So Initial use case was how do I build a simple weather app, right? Just as a test in React. You're going to go to openweather.ai, you're going to grab API key, all that stuff. Initial right, you put the API key in line to what you're doing, terrible security. Why Rabbit Neo catches it and starts making suggestions on, let's not do it this way. So there's a lot of cool applicability. Now, as to getting into the red teaming industry side of things, so this is where you need to kind of do ahead your ability. You do want to have coding experience that does help a lot you need a significant and deep understanding of cybersecurity itself not just at how the application interacts but with the rest of the system attacks don't happen in code alone attacks happen in entirety including how the humans use it so do having some background psychology definitely helps understanding human behavior but deep understanding of cybersecurity and software development is a massive plus i was just kind of one of the thing uh, the thing i really like it for you know i'm a I haven't written a lot of code in a long time, but but I'm an ex-coder by by both training and work. I find it really handy to give it a piece of code or again a config file and just explain to me what it's doing. And it will even comment that code for you so it's more clear for you next time or for whoever as well. I also find it just really handy for language translation, um, not necessarily just on the coding side, but like I'm on a website that's in French or German or Russian or whatever, and just being quickly getting the, uh, with a technical model, translating that back out for me um, is, is very handy. This is another really powerful use case for these models. Yeah, no, it, uh, the capabilities sound really cool. A lot of great insight. And uh, you know, I can't wait to try it out myself, honestly. Uh, I guess uh, this kind of wraps it up. If uh, you have any final words, anything additionally you want to share? I, I, you know, I, I think the key thing is, um, you know, again, these are the these are the worst models we're ever going to use. So if you find it and you're playing with it, it doesn't do exactly what you want to do, come back in a month, right? The models keep improving and changing. Um, and then we're also trying different models for different use persons, like I said. Like today, the best model is built on DeepSeek. That's what you find at whiterabbitneo.com. But for uh, groups that don't want to use Chinese-based models, they want to use you know uh, models that were uh, built by American tech companies, that's possible to also get out of White Rabbit Neo. Um, some of those are actually smaller ones are available at Hugging Face today. We have more in flight uh, as well. Like I said, the Llama, uh, the Meta Llama models will, will be up uh, soon. And um, and just come into the community and 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 work with us. You know, tell us tell us what how we can help, uh, what we can do. Reach out, uh, connect on LinkedIn if if you're a, if you're on the commercial side of things. Um, you know, we we would love to hear more thoughts on it. Okay, uh, I guess that's everything. Uh, thank you so much for all the information, and all the facilitation and support you guys have done for the AI community, uh, for Red Team Village for being a platinum sponsor. Uh, thank you so much for your time. And, yeah, th yeah, same. And thanks for the invite and. Um, look forward to seeing you guys at Vegas. Yeah, to see you guys at the party for sure, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. absolutely.